Good afternoon and welcome back to the garden. It's a lovely day, a nice cool breeze, no sun but it's still warm. Now today I'm going to finish putting some potatoes in. I believe I've got just two rows of first earlies to put in but I'll put one in with you to show you how I put my potatoes in now. I used to make trenches and then backfill but now I do it this way, I'll show you that later. The other thing that's new to you, I've just put this up this morning because the sparrows are going along the rows of the germinating carrots and eating them. So I've put the frame up and I've, what I've done, I've just put the nets on it at the moment as soon as I get a minute I'll re-take the nets off and put them on properly but it was just to get them on quick to keep those sparrows off and uh, you could see where they'd been jumping about and taking them out now we can't have too long a video today because I'm suffering with the hay fever the tree pollen is really making me suffer this year I've taken the tablets etc but the, the wind is coming from the west where all the trees are with the blossom on and it really is getting to me a little bit so just bear with me but we will show you how to put potatoes in and a quick look in the greenhouse. I have put potatoes in this bed here, five rows evenly spaced they're all late so they'll finish together and then we can clear the whole thing out. On this plot I'm going to put six rows because there's more, it's a little bit bigger than that one. I put four rows in, they're the late and this row here is Cara which is a second early so hopefully it will finish these. If we're still using the swift potatoes it doesn't matter because Cara can also become a main crop. I put the line down and move the line and then I fork it back to that line which leaves the trench to put the next row of potatoes in and then go again but I'll show you anyway. Rose. These will be the two rows that I'm putting in here. Now your first earlies, you don't need to space them out quite as much as you do your lates because you'll probably be taking these as soon as they're ready. So you don't have to let them get big. But you can see the two white ones, they were left the wrong way round. And that's what happens if you just, if you get your taters the wrong way up and the uh, no light gets to the sprut so they go white but they'll be white underground anyway i'm not going to remove any of the sprouts from these because they're first early so you want maximum potatoes out of them the little tiny ones i should just space out together and just fill the row up let's have them in they don't have to be quite as deep as the main crop ones so there's plenty of depth in there what we do Put one at each end, like that, and then this one in the centre. If you, was, you can do this when you're on short rows. If you're on very long rows, you'll be worn out by the time you set your taters down. And with them being first earliest, we'll put and these little ones. We'll put them that close together, and these little ones. Just space them apart. Remember the, the seed potato will rot so you don't want them too close together so they'll rot all your taters. So we've got now uh, one there. That one's a bit small but it'll go in. One there. And I think that one that one's a bit small, so we we'll put the gap between them and put them there. Now we'll move the mats back. I had to add the mats yesterday because it was very, very wet when I was putting them in. Move the mats back so I can dig along. I 
When I'm doing it on my own, I just keep them back, but you're here, so I'll do it properly. Take the light off. There is a marker already there for them, look. Now, I work on the mats all the time because if you're walking along, it does compress the, the soil so tight. When you come to dig it over, it's quite hard to do. So use the mats and it keeps it pliable. And it's just a case of get your marker right like that. And then we just turn this. I'll just do a few. This is plenty firm enough because I've been walking on it. I do the marking, I find this the easiest way to do it. What we've got one, two, three, four, let's do five. So you can see. And once I start turning it, you'll see how much manure and straw is actually in this, ready for the potatoes. The soil was well prepared for this crop. Let's turn it. Just take that out for a second. And back to where you started there. Try not to go too deep next to the potato or else you lift it up with the fork. Make it all nice and level. You can see the straw and the compost that's in it. Uh, oh dear, and I forgot to put the blood fish and bone in. I blame the hay fever, you know. Terrible. So here it is, just normal. The looks of the bucket, we're gonna to have to buy another one soon. It doesn't go very far this time of year. So I'll sprinkle it down, let's get rid of the fork. We're going to put some on the bank, if you know what I mean, and then some on the front for digging in. Put plenty, because they want it fast. And then some along there, look. So with this bone, fish blood and bone, and all that uh, compost and straw that's in there, they should do well. Now I'll start again. Keep it tidy as you go. You can see how easy it's breaking with what the amount of compost that's in. This was our own compost, by the way, that we made in those bins. And I've made new bins, but I'll show you those next week. And to say the amount of rain we've had on this heavy land is digging quite well with this amount of composting. Uh, last one with you. Just tidy it as you can. That's it, I'll finish that row in a moment. I know some people like to ridge theirs as they plant them. I used to do that, but I found when you've got your ridge, you can guarantee potatoes will come out at the side instead of the top. So, <coughs> excuse me. If I let the potatoes come up, they, coming more or less a straight line 
and then our ridge to them which gives you those nice straight lines so I'll now finish this and show you it ready for the next line now I've turned the soil over on top of the potatoes and I've put the line in where the next row will go and now what I do is I fork back to that line leave the trench and that's where we put the next row in and you just progress down like that so when you're finished if you can see behind me it's nice and tidy and not walked on and compressed and those potatoes will come through in no time at all it is getting a little bit difficult as we get towards the edge of the bed because when I turn this last one over there'll be a trench all the way down now when this is turned and this trench is ready if you can imagine when I turn this on top of the potatoes there'll be a trench left at the back at the end of the plot now to compensate for that soil that's missing if you look at this plot here this is where the brussels will be going but if I take out a line across the center about a, a spit deep not too and then put in the wheelbarrow and bring it to this trench here as backfill and then because this will soon rake up rake level again but I don't want to actually dig the soil because the brussels like fair so you just cut the trench rake it in and then tread it all down level again it seems a lot of work bringing this soil in from one of the other plots but that plot there when I finished those potatoes I actually took the end off this plot and backfilled it with those so all the time you're moving your soil a little bit all the soil is well prepared ready for the crops so it's perfectly all right to move it about and now the same again we'll just fork it over don't take too much off with your fork just take it in little bites and it's easier to work with then and just break it up with the prong I don't go chopping like mad because I know it's absolutely full of worms so I just gently nudge it in and then that one will keep it up there and then that one will fill that one still sticky look from all that rain but it's it's pliable enough stick to the line don't want to, too much mess it's be sticking to our shoes and then to the line again you can always force it out up the line like that when you're at the, the end just to get them ready to put the potatoes in there's a stone in there somewhere no, I lost it never mind Very wet here, look. I was digging away yesterday and I had two swallows flying around me, but they seemed to have, I bet they thought it was too cold here and they moved on. I had the swallows chirping above my head. The woodpecker in the old oak tree behind me, he was hammering in there. And I thought, life's good. You see, I'll do the next one then, I should.
to say as wet as it is, it is breaking me. Now, if you can imagine, this goes all the way to that end, but, and we want to get it ready for the next row of potato. You just go along with your fork and just keep hooking it over like that and then that's then ready for your next line. Right, I'll put the last row in later when I'm feeling a bit better. It really is heavy pollen. So we'll knit to the greenhouse, the bottom greenhouse, and I'll show you how all the uh, seedlings are coming on. We've got seedlings everywhere. Just while we're passing, we're just going in the greenhouse. I've just spotted something here that you want to be aware of if you're growing rhubarb. It's doing beautiful at the moment, but just be aware of this. Look. Can you see it? Two of them, look. They're the flowers. I take those off. As soon as I see one, I'll stop and take it off. Don't want them on. You might find there's a leaf with it, that one. But take them both. Like that look. And this one will taste sour anyway when it even when it's developed. But take this one as well. Look. There's the leaf that's on it. Just snap them off. Don't want those. Put them in your compost bin. They'll do well. And then just leave it to get on with it again. There's another one here, let's have that one as well. There we are, it's only a small one. If all these big seed heads come up, they'll be up here and they'll be producing seed at the cost of your rhubarb. We want the rhubarb, not particularly the seed. So we take them off and then that keeps the rest of the rhubarb good and sweet and healthy. By the way, the chickens can be released on Tuesday. Uh, some people let theirs out already. If you've only got a small, um, small number of chickens, it'll be fine now. Mine will be out probably tomorrow, but they won't be coming down here because I've got too much too many plants for them to attack down here so they'd absolutely love it especially if I was digging with all those worms but they're not allowed this end they've got their garden at the top now we've come into the greenhouse temperatures can't quite see I'll tell you that in a moment I'll show you the cucumber as you can see there's a couple of them here not looking very well at all so I just hope they'll they'll pick up for no apparent reason, they're lovely and warm. The water that they get has always been in the greenhouse for a day before they're put on. There's plenty of root growth on them. But that's what cucumbers do every now and again. They just pack up and that's it. I must have two. If I lose any more, I shall set the seed as soon as I get it and get them going so we can get them in that top greenhouse and get them growing. If you take these up to the top greenhouse now, they, they wouldn't make it at all because it's a lot colder than this greenhouse. It hasn't got the big thick wall behind it up there. But as you can see, everything else seems to be fine. I'll just show you quickly the beans and peas coming up. There's one or two we misses, but they could still, that one's, the seed is still germinating, so they're fine. They're the Rebecca, what we have for cutting in the autumn, for taking up to the house. Sweet corn, there's 17 seed in there and I think there's 16 seed come up. I would like to see those two come up and then we know they're all germinated. The peas are doing well. Beetroot, I think we're finding Yes, this, they've all germinated, no problem. They're doing well. These are the bolt hardy. As you see, you'll get little groups. That's because you get more than one 
plant from a seed. These are the Monita, which is supposed to get one seed per one plant per seed, but even those have got a couple. So what I might do is take those two out and if one's looking a bit weak like this one not, might not make it. If it does, that's fine. If not, we'll bring one of those across. These are the marigolds that I use for putting around the tomatoes to keep the aphid down. It seems to work. That's the celery doing quite well. These are the pumpkin, nothing yet. Squash, nothing yet. Gourds, nothing yet. And courgettes. The tomatoes are going from strength to strength. I think we might even get some tomatoes soon, the way we're going in here. But they'll need to be in here for at least another three weeks. These are the seedlings we're actually going to pot up tomorrow. So there's a bit of basil, calabrese, cauliflower, cabbage, cabbage and more cabbage. Kohlrabi, doing quite well. Lettuce, that's the maize that has the red tips on. Diane likes that. That's more lettuce, that's little gem. That'll be following the little gem that we've got in. Kohlrabi again there. Celeriac there. These are the San Marino 3, which is a very, very strong tomato. They're bush, so I will not be taking any of these off side shoots. If anything, I'll just clean the bottom. So take the bottom ones out and then there's a bit of stem. We, it'll keep them cleaner. Now the peppers, the yellow bell are doing well. There's the yellow bell there. That's yellow bell with the labels in. These three here are king of the north. They're the first set of the little gems. They'll go into a frame, we'll make the frame for those. They look like they're chilli peppers. They are, they're chilli peppers. These are not chilli peppers, what are these? It says here. This is your king of the north. Those, that tray there. We've got, it does seem that we've got an awful lot of peppers, but I've got quite a few people who say they'll take them. And it's a pleasure to give them. That one there is Black Beauty, so that'll be an aubergine. More peppers. They're chilli peppers again. I have a nice gentleman next door who says he likes chilli peppers, so we'll give him a We'll give them a tray. The leeks are doing very well. That's the green trays of the leeks. The ones at the back are the Redlander onions. They're doing all right. They'll be going into the cold frame this afternoon. More of the onions that will all be going into the cold frame out there this afternoon. No frost tonight, perfectly all right. As soon as they get out there where it's a bit colder they'll really start growing then. And there's plenty of compost around those roots to get them nice and big, and then we'll get the land prepared and get them in. This little pot here was uh, the backup for the artichokes. They didn't seem to be doing very well, so I popped some more seed in. But they do look very nice in the flower bed, you know, when they get the heads up and they are big leaf plants, so they look quite nice. We've got to the thermometer now, it's 28 degrees Celsius at the moment. It's been up to 35, and last night it got to nine in here, but it got to nine in here, but all this was all fleece down with a, a double layer of fleece. I've got a, a pot of parsley here, it's doing quite well. <coughs> You must remember that your parsley that you grow and take this year, next year will go straight to flower. So you really need to be starting it every year. It's not, it is a biannual, not a perennial. This um, geranium was really suffering, well it is still suffering, but it's 
coming back slowly I'm sure we'll revive it and get it going it was one of the casualties from the overwintering I thought I'd lost it but it's a lovely pink so I want to keep it that'll be it for now I think I'll pop up to the house and have a cup of tea and sit down and then um, as I say tomorrow we must get those onions in the frame I'll do those tonight and then we can get the rest of this potting up done because some of those uh, cabbages are getting a bit large but we'll get that done tomorrow no problem and then we'll show you what we've done I don't believe there's any more seeds I'm desperate to get in at the moment the cocoa de pampol is all still in the shed waiting to come down I think the beetroot will probably go on that side and then the rest of the beans etc can go on this table where they can germinate. So take care everyone and I'll see you in a few days. Bye now.